welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Hello again, and here we are with The Near Memo, David, Mike, and Greg, uh, episode 96, where we talk about local search, commerce, technology, and so on and so forth, and anything else that enters our brain spontaneously. <laughs> <laughs> who, who me uh today um you know the the whole week, mike's gonna stay uh, focused today mike is gonna stay focused today i i'm 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 a little bit self-conscious about talking about chat chat gpt or anything ai but it's so pervasive that we sort of ha- are going to touch on it again we're going to talk about the, the big announcement i think this week without question in the local world was um Apple My Business or Apple Business Connect, as they're formally calling it. And both of you guys have already been in the UI and have some strong, generally positive, I think, views of it. And Mike's going to lead off with that. And then, yes, you wanted to in- oh. preview your opinion earlier? No, no, I was just getting ready to say you. That's all. Oh, okay. All right. So then um, David is going to talk about, uh, we got into a little bit of a debate over t- uh, in, on Twitter about the value of stack ranking uh, in organizations, Google uh, had announced that they were trying to re-rank people according to performance, which is a prelude to layoffs. And other companies have been doing that to Twitter uh, and some others. And what's the virtue or value of that versus the detrimental effects potentially? And then um, we will revisit inevitably the chat issue. And there's a lot of interesting things going on, uh, obviously, with that. And we'll we'll talk about Uh, some of them. So Mike, why don't you tell us about Apple Business Connect? So Apple Business Connect rolled out yesterday as both a new small business interface, as well as an API. The small business interface is quite elegant, easy to use, simple, dramatically expanded. Apple positions it as a way for small businesses to achieve the same presence across their iPhone and mobile platforms as large enterprises. The API may be more significant from a Apple point of view, because historically they haven't had an API. They've done digital sneaker net with JSON files to their big providers, and they haven't trusted the data coming in. So they never built an API. So the Sochi's of the world would literally have to send a file off to Apple that would then get processed into maps. The API is uh, significant in a number of ways. One is it, it will lead towards real time changes, uh, for large organizations, as well as these primary data suppliers. The other part of the API is that Apple did imply or state in their documentation that large organizations could get access to the API directly. Um, It will be interesting to see how they control data quality in that because historically some of these large data providers, I won't name any names, have allowed (laughs) spam in for a price and have sent it off to Google. We'll see what happens with Apple. So, but in addition to this improved interface and the API, they've dramatically, they've provided insights for the first time uh, into uh, t- what they call taps, which is number of clicks, uh, sort of actions, I guess, where, what people searched for and where they searched from. I don't know if the API has more features than that. Um, so but key, they, so key- Keywords and location of the user. Yes, obviously with privacy issues. So if there's not enough volume of any, they're not going to show. And then David mentioned in on Twitter yesterday that they're also now allowing uh, tracking URLs, which would, for the first time, allow you to see. So with tracking URLs plus the Apple Insights, you will be able to see l- how many conversions you're getting both from your website and possibly from your phone calls. So just a quick a, note, I, I was able to get a tracking URL into an existing claimed verified listing. Uh, they did not like, they, I couldn't even click the submit button, putting it in, trying to claim a listing for the first time. So you sort of have to get the listing approved and then go in and make changes uh, to, to be able to add that tracking. URL. But it's the first time we have insights. I think it would be interesting to see, I, I having dealt with some folks in the hospitality industry, high-end hospitality, they see a lot of Apple traffic and it'll be interesting to compare conversions from Apple to Google uh, in that industry where I think it's going to be most popular, but we'll see. They also introduced what they call showcases, plural, 
And that's uh, a call to action post where the business has some offer. It's very easy to do, very quick. It's a limited duration, 30 days. Yeah. Google posts, Google posts. Yes. They have new place card header and logo that publishes almost instantly. It's a very fairly large resolution, uh, 2.5 to one. So it's much wider than this high image of the business with a small logo that publishes very quickly, um, in the place. And then, uh, they now allow multiple users and a user can be assigned to multiple accounts. So it's a much more flexible structure. And they emphasized in their marketing that it's across their whole ecosystem, not just maps, but messages, wallet, Siri, and other apps, which implies to me when you view that in light of their high resolution image requirements, which they're accepting up to 4,000 pixel images versus Apple's 750 by 750. You mean Google's it implies 750 that, by 750? What's that? Google's As 750 opposed by, to Google's 750. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and Google rejects images that are more than about 1,500 pixels. Yeah. Apple's high resolution requirements uh, implies, along with their statement about uh, the, the spreading across multiple apps, implies that it's going to be integrated with their augmented reality system in some way. So it's an interesting product. You know, we don't know the role that Apple's been playing in local because it's been hidden from us. I think we'll find in certain verticals it's very strong, and in other verticals there's no presence at all. We'll see. As you know, we don't we know it's been used for navigation. We just don't know how much discovery and conversions are going on. So, I, I so David, can't what remember your a yeah I can't yeah. remember a press release in the sort of marketing tech world that undersold the level of improvement more than the one that Apple put out this week. I was I, I sort of you know, I read it and I thought, ah, oh, this is, you know, reskinning the existing thing and, you know, putting a couple of bells and whistles in, then logged in and it was like, wow, wildly different experience, much more functionality, the incredible juxtaposition with, um, I mean, I'm not saying it, it has gone beyond where Google's My Business dashboard was even three or four years ago, but the juxtaposition of, hey, this is a real product for managing location information versus the just absolute dumpster fire of the NMX uh, new GBP experience. I mean, it's just incredible that Apple is doubling down in a 180 degree direction from where Google is going. And I think it is, you know, it's certainly an MVP. There's a lot of stuff in there that's, I think, clunky. I think the user management stuff is actually really poor. Um, although it's better than it was before. And so I think it is, it's clearly laying a very strong foundation, however, for future development that I don't think we've seen from Apple before. I mean, I think that the, the previous uh, business register and the original Maps Connect were just incredibly limited and by Apple standards, you know, clearly had not been given TLC that Apple is known for in terms of design and experience. And I think this was, this is a this feels like a very real Apple product to me, uh, which is very impressive, and I think will continue to expand and attract a lot more usage because it is so easy and um, delightful to use. And the API being both real time and available is is also was undersold, and not even mentioned in any like the TechCrunch article or any of those other articles, not even mentioned. And for look, it it really means that. When you do an update at Rio or Reputation or Sochi or Uberall or EX, it's going to flow right or, through. Or DAC Group, as I was reminded by them. Oh, or <laughs> DAC <laughs> Group, they weren't in there. So it'd be curious to know how many beyond the five have access currently. I do know that over a year, about a year and a half ago, Apple went around to virtually every listing provider and said, we want to engage with you on listing provision and improved photography. That was a year and a half ago. And I had heard rumors at that time, year and a half ago, that they were going to provide insights. And the speculation amongst the listing providers was that it would be a JSON file transfer. And so this is significantly more than that on so many levels. And it's all of what they said. And in talking, you know, I've heard rumors that this has been a full on press by Apple that it isn't they haven't, you know, product people, technical people and marketing people have been made available to make sure this is a success. So it's 
Uh, unlike the rumors that we see with that Apple is cutting back development. This is a huge development with took a lot of resources. They've done a really good job of it. And it's a great V2O, you know. And, and in particular, I just have to highlight one example, which has been a huge UX nightmare since I've been in local search since 2005. It's the first like incredibly simple, exactly how it should have been designed from the beginning way to input hours for a business. It, I was able to go in and, and as part of a new claiming process, literally with a single click, it pre-filled kind of the default stuff. And it's so, so easy and such a joy to actually select hours in Apple as opposed to Google and every other product. Um, and I just think it's a really, it's a really, um, you know, it, as a single data point, it just illustrates the amount of care and thought that I think has gone into this release. So, so I, I mean, there's an interesting question about why are they doing this? Let's let's defer that to a later discussion because I think that involves a lot of speculation. You know, we, we talked yesterday, kind of in a private conversation. They're going to put ads in maps, and this is trying to beef up discovery and so on and so forth to make that more uh, viable. But let's let's leave that aside for a moment. I have two kind of overlapping questions, which is how are they going to get the news out to small business owners? who don't really think about Apple as a marketing channel for themselves. That's one. And two is sort of below the line of these enterprise multi-location vendors like Uberall and Sochi and PAC and so on and so forth. There are a whole bunch of agencies, agency broadly defined to include the Vendastas of the world and some traditional media publishers that have a lot of small business customers or directly or indirectly is the API going to be available to them because they aggregate hundreds of thousands of these small business customers who are less likely to go to Apple di directly, at least in the near term? I have an answer to that. In their guide, they sh they say that it will be both to large enterprise and third-party service providers. They provide links to the application. They tell you what you need to do. So it appears, we don't know what the vetting process is like, but it does appear that large organizations and third party vendors will have access to the API. Uh, so the answer is yes, they're opening that up. And we don't know how far this initial rollout went. They only mentioned five, but you mentioned a six. I'm sure given that they went around the whole industry a year and a half ago, they know who the players are. You know, they're, they have a strong presence at Cinda. So I yep. you know they know in Europe who the players are. Um, so. The answer to that is yes, they will be opening it up to others. And I'll answer well, the first question about getting yeah. the word out to SMBs. I mean, we've just, in the last six months, they've released this whole sort of, at whatever their name is, I can't business remember, is, the, Apple, the Apple essentials. version of, of Google Workspace, right? Um, and yeah. so- Business Essentials, I think. Is yeah, I can totally see this being a bolt-on module of a Business Essentials yeah. uh, subscription, not that they're necessarily going to charge for it, but just like, hey, as part of that experience- don't yeah. you want to manage your business's locations on Apple Maps? So treat, treating the treating, I mean, they, they have an enormous consumer channel, obviously, and business, small business owners are a subset of the consumer audience, and they could use those channels hypothetically to educate people and get them over there. David, um, question for you on this. Is there any bulk upload? I couldn't find no, a bulk No, so upload. that's what I did not see one yesterday, but I am eager to apply for uh, verified API status with my two large enterprise healthcare clients, for sure. Um, I've had trouble actually getting locations approved because there's not a utility bill that comes to a particular hospital department or whatever. It's very hard to get those those clinics approved. Um, so, I, you know, if there is some sort of bulk verification, I think it's worth an enterprise probably investing, you know, some internal development time just to just to be able to make the real time connections with your with your CMS or location management right. system. If and there was a process through a vendor like a Yext or Associate. Right. right. There was a process for those enterprises to, ass to assign a third party developer to the project. It looked like mm -hmm. in the documentation where they could hire you and you then become the mm -hmm. interface or whatever. So it looks like that's all set up. But it'd be interesting to hear how you make out with it. I know from my my time at Uberall, uh, sort of vicariously, I wasn't directly involved in Apple, but I I knew, I, I have knowledge of their interaction and they're very, 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 as you, I think Mike pointed out, they're very anal for lack of a better way to put it about the data quality. And I think that that 
that will be an issue in this process as they open this up to lots and lots of entities uh, that will be a challenge for them to ensure data quality and accuracy uh, they're you know meeting their standards while at the same time encouraging a lot of people to participate I, it'll be something interesting to see how they reconcile this and the, the negative side of that is spam uh, yeah of course right, which we haven't seen a whole lot of in Apple Maps because they've been so reliant on Yelp as a data provider and Yelp has got reasonable, if not perfect processes in place. So we'll see, but it, it is, it does bode well. And I, like I said, I think this is going to be vertically relevant. And I think the businesses in the critical verticals will learn fairly quickly that, that they are getting traffic from Apple and particularly if it allows for URL tracking so that it shows up in your analytics that this came from maps and it's a conversion, that's going to be huge. And Greg, to your point, I mean, that's the kind of data that would theoretically incentivize people to start advertising yes. on Apple Maps when that yes. comes out. Yes, so. right. Precisely. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.